Jack Dickerman. Oh. Are we live? We're live. Well, welcome to the Theme Park Podcast. Yeah, sorry, I don't have the uh, the pre-roll. Okay, that's all right. I'll, uh, there, I'll let the sponsor know that you didn't air a pre-roll, and oh. uh, you can deal with the consequences. <laughs> Walk right by her and be like, hey. Yeah, yeah, let's not do that. No pre-roll aired. No pre-roll aired. You don't have to we, pay for this we week's could, episode. We could do a live version of it. I don't remember the script. Yeah. I know the name of the client. I think all you have to say is, didn't you marry her? <laughs> I say something. Sure, sure. I say something else. I know. Yeah. Well, uh, welcome to the Realtor. Uh, dot com. Yes. Realtor. Realtor. You say that better than me. I have a hard time. With that <laughs> Realtor. Word. dot com. Realtor. 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 Lauren Campbell. Realtor. Lauren dot Campbell. Com. Realtor. Dot. It's it's the Campbell and the Realtor that they, they don't roll together out of my mouth. It's a me problem, not a Lauren problem. I was gonna say like one of us still gets paid to talk for a living. Yeah. Yeah, that's you. Actually, I've I've paid to. Talk about one specific subject. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's fine. That's uh, that's good. I don't. I don't. I don't mind not being paid to talk anymore. Dan Stone used to have a bumper sticker that said "Paid to Hate." <laughs> okay. And I just thought that was so like spot on for like his spot. Yeah. Uh, we have not done a uh, pre-show in I don't know how long. When's the last time we were here? About like six weeks ago. Six weeks, huh? Yeah. Is that like January? Before MegaCon, it was before MegaCon. That oh. was the end of that was the end of January. God, I have no memory. It was of right things. before you went on vacation. Oh, I remember going on vacation. Yeah, you spent a lot of money. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. The, the crazy thing is, is we're all three here today. That is true. Yeah. Unlike a week ago, the missing Jimmy. Yes. Well, we just and then he surfaced the second we dropped the call. As soon as we finished the podcast, Jimmy's like, "Oh, we were just happy you weren't in a ditch somewhere." Yeah, that we was... thought the we immediately thought the worst. We didn't. We weren't going to do anything. Yeah, I was going to say you guys seem real worried. We had we were certain that you uh, rolled your jeep over into a ditch, uh, submerged in water, and uh, drowned. I assumed you were driving through a wooded area, and you came up to a sign. That said one way to the cruise ship and one way deeper into the woods and the sign was broken and then you came to a waterfall and you got your Jeep stuck and then you got out to use the winch and then in doing so you saw a giant Jurassic creature and threw a stick at it and you said get the stick stupid and then it didn't and then when you went back into the Jeep there was another one that spit uh, venom in your face. Have you considered getting a winch for your Jeep? Because that was always like the coolest part of a Jeep is you could have a winch on it. Yeah, but then you got to have like a special like uh, grill. Bumper, yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. that grill thing. Yeah, I mean, but I mean, you got a winch. Here's the thing. That you'll you, probably never use. You could with. Actually, no, you don't need that. You can put just a winch like in front of the win- uh, the, the bumper. With yeah. one of the mm-hmm. news stories I have tonight, you might need a winch. Okay. All right. Because it might involve one of the members of this show. See, that's that's why Scott gets paid to talk on the radio because he knows how to do a tease. Yeah, it's a tease. Do you guys want to do a podcast then, so we can find out what he's talking about? Yes, yeah. we have to do two tonight. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, coming down in three, two. From the theme park capital of the world, Orlando, Florida. This is the theme park podcast. Wait, podcast? Is this on the radio? so messy on this station. Anyway, here's your hosts, Dickerman, Jimmy D, and Scott Harris. And welcome uh, to the Theme Park Podcast. Dickerman here. There is Jimmy D. What's going on, fellas? And uh, Scott Harris. Promo code me. Beautiful night uh, here the, uh, what are we, in March? Yes. Yes, we're in March. This is this is probably like the dying days of the beautiful day. Soon it's going to be 3,000 degrees when you go to the theme park. It's still light out at night, and it freaks me out. Yeah, that is uh, that is true. Uh, what's probably freaking people out too is if they're trying to go to the theme parks this week. This is we're into spring break, right? Oh yes, it it's is full sp- on. Orange County spring break begins Monday, right? To, uh, as of recording tomorrow. Oh, 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 they got Friday off. Okay, yep. nice. Good for them. Uh, I know Lake County was already in. They were in this week, and then it's just it's spread out like so much. Just in the state of Florida, then across the country, mm-hmm. spring break seems to last for like... It's the next two months. Two months. Yeah. And it's horrible at the theme parks. And then after that, it's summer. And then summer. And it's hot. And it's horrible at the theme parks. 
Uh, yeah, we're into a we're into a, an interesting stretch of time at the parks. For we sure. just need all the parks to be open past seven o'clock. That is for sure. If you're a theme park and you're operating in Florida, you should 100 percent be open till 11 p.m. every night. Ten o'clock at least. Okay, ten Maybe o'clock. Ten. I mean, I I prefer 11. Mm-hmm. Uh, profits be damned. I want to be there when it's not a million degrees and the sun is beating down on me, uh, giving me heat stroke. Yeah. Then you honestly you should consider doing like a siesta, like they do in Spain. Just take uh, the hottest part of the day, just close the park up. Yeah. Just close it up, hottest part of the day. Turn off the rides. Should yeah. put everyone at water parks? I mean, you can. I mean, we've got enough water parks now. There are a lot of water parks. Two Disneys, the Universal, and the SeaWorld. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And uh-huh. the crazy thing is when you think about the water parks, the worst ones are the Disney parks. I mean, that's a relative term. Technologically, yeah, w- they're the oldest, you know. They are the oldest, but I I still think Typhoon Lagoon's got something that no other water park got. What do they have? I haven't been there in forever. That, the, the tsunami wave pool. Oh, is that just an extra big wave? Yeah. Okay. Like, if you go to the wave pool at most of the other parks, it's just like like the ocean like bobbing think, you up and down. I this, think they're concerned about yeah, lawsuits, probably. <laughs> I've seen well, people barely make it in the regular wave pool. That's me. That's me. That was me at Volcano <laughs> Bay. I almost did not make it. Yeah, I, I, if you're not in the rhythm of the waves, mm-hmm, <laughs> it yeah. can go bad. Uh, yeah, I, I'll have to go check that one out at uh, Typhoon Lagoon. As, uh, Aquatica just opened a new slide this week. The SeaWorld business is just to keep opening new stuff constantly because they've got the new roller coaster coming. The new slide, uh, they were doing like pass holder previews this week. Yeah. My objection to Aquatica is the fact that they had. All their slides mm-hmm. are enclosed. There's not a single one that you can see mm. while you're going on it. Okay. I, I, and I'm not, like, ever since, did you ever go on the black hole? At, yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I love that one. That was one of my favorites mm-hmm. until they stopped using the LEDs that were, like, in the piping. So it was pitch black. So it was pitch black. Mm-hmm. And I whacked my head in that so bad that I saw stars. Like, and I, that was the hey, first it's a black time. Hole. Yeah, exactly. That was the first time in my life that I understood why they did that Looney Tunes commercial in cartoons. <laughs> I was like, that everywhere. actually happens. Yeah, if you don't get injured at a water park, you're not doing the water park right. If you don't nearly drown or get injured or lose your sunglasses or bathing suit, you're not doing the water park right. I, my eyes are mostly closed like half the time when I do these rides, anyways. Yeah, there's the one I don't like is that toilet bowl one. Where it like goes up on the big wall and then you know swings back down. Yeah, I've never been on that one. That one is that the one that, that like Volcano Bay has one of those and it's right next to I four. Yeah, and that one is terrifying because sometimes you get up there and it goes and like the person that's on the top is like falling forward nearly. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, well, those keep your legs crossed won't be a problem. Those seem dangerous. They do seem dangerous, but um, yeah, new ride at Aquatica if you're into theme park uh, water water. Parks. Did you go? Did you ride it? I have not ridden it yet. No, I think Did you today, tell your manatee friend about it. Today was the day. <laughs> Today was the day for uh, pass holders, and I had to work today, so I didn't. I didn't work get to go. from work from the park. Did you not listen to me on the show last week? I was in the. It's a, I think it, to work at a water park would be very difficult. Why? You got to bring your laptop. Yes. No. Got, I'm not they, saying work from a lazy river. They got tons of sand in that Aquatica. It's sand everywhere. You, I know for a fact you have worked on a laptop at places full of sand before. Yeah, dirt, not sand. It's dirt. That's true. Filthy dirt. Yeah. Dirty feet. Listen to. That. Anakin Skywalker over here. I hate sand. Yet he loves Dune. <laughs> oh, Dune was fantastic. If you haven't seen Dune in the theater, this is not theme park related. Go see it in the theater. See it in Dolby if you can. You have to see it 14 more times to catch up with that I guy. I just on finally saw it this week, so I'm extra excited about it. You guys are like, that was two weeks ago. <laughs> it was two weeks ago. Uh, we're not excited about it anymore. Oh, no. I, I have since watched part one again, and mm-hmm. I've been itching to go to part two. And I was going to go when you were there. Mm hmm. Because I wanted to sit directly behind you and kick your seat, but yeah, that seat was not available. So yeah, um, I would still not mind a double feature. Like if they decided to do like they're getting towards the end of the run, let's do a double feature. They should have done that. It's like nine hours in the theater. Well, they though. kind of. Well, they did it a few. They did it like a two weeks before part two came out, and then in the in between, they re released Tenant in theaters because that never uh, got a proper theatrical release for the most part because it came out during covid mm. so that got a dolby imax release okay yeah uh, dune was great in the dolby theater though. i mean the thing is like i know we're a theme park podcast but with the strike last year there's a lot of studios re-releasing movies a24 is releasing three movies over the next uh six weeks in imax so uh, Hereditary, Ex okay. Machina, and Uncut Gems are all getting uh, imax releases Ex Machina was theirs 
That was a long time ago, right? Yeah. Wow, I didn't know they were around that long. Interesting. Yeah, they've been around since like 2014. Did they do Thanksgiving? No. Oh. Felt like that would have been something they did. No, no, no. That's, no. Uh, You know this. A24 is a very nuanced uh, movies. Waiting for Civil War. That's all. Oh, yeah. All right, should we get into some theme park news since we are a theme park podcast? Yes, because I have very specific news for you. Me, okay. You in particular. Sometimes it's me. 95% of the time it's Jimmy-related hey. news. Yeah, that's true. He's not wrong. Beginning March 15th through April 30th. Mm-hmm, March 15th through April. So, yeah, it's like now. Universal Orlando Resort and Universal Studios Hollywood mm-hmm, mm-hmm. are celebrating butterbeer season. What does that mean? Featuring limited time treats. Okay, let's. Uh, I'm I'm intrigued. Uh huh. So we've got uh, cold, mm-hmm. frozen. That's my that's my go to. Frozen is a good to. I have a hard time going with anything else. Hot. Never had it. Hot's the best. And you know me. I, I, I always contend this. Hot and dangerous. Non dairy, for people that don't have uh, that don't have dairy. Oh yep yep yep. Fudge. Oh, that's interesting. Potted cream. I don't know what that is. Ice cream. I've had the ice cream. So those are all the ones you're familiar with. I've never yep. had fudge or potted cream. What's potted cream? Does anybody know? It's, all I can say is I think it comes like in one of those like miniature like mason jars. Okay. With like a little pop top. Okay. I, I'd, I'd try it. The fudge is the it's kind fudge. Of like I, a, it's kind of like a custard. Okay. Oh, I would like to try that. I just have a hard time going away from the frozen because I know it's just the best and you can't match it. Um, throughout butterbeer season, mm-hmm. uh, there will also be some new treats. Okay. An iced lolly version, which is a butterbeer popsicle. Okay. All right. Yeah, that's probably that. good. That's, yeah, that's, that's, that's good. That's, that's not just a frozen butterbeer. Mm. It's completely frozen. See, what I need uh, in a situation like this, I need Universal to have me out and then let me just have everything uh-huh. to try. This is why we were talking. I, I brought up a winch. If I do it on my own To dime. kind of lure him away. From the butterbeer? <laughs> yes. Oh, I thought you meant just get him, like, back into the car. Also that. You've already lost a foot. you got to go. <laughs> um, and then there's also uh, butterbeer caramels. You know. Oh, little, like. Yep. Oh, if you can good. lose both feet, it would be so much easier to roll you back to the car. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's true. So, yeah, those are um, a bunch of new butterbeer options. And so that's live now. You can go get it. Yep. Um, I still recommend frozen butterbeer, even though I haven't had, like, 30% of those. Yeah. You I've had the ice cream. All, you should have one of each. I've had the cold and I've had the ice cream, and I don't feel like they even come close to the frozen. I have not had the hot. Scott says hot, it's good. Hot is amazing. But the, the, the problem is, is it's not cold enough. Mm-hmm. It's it's When it's like freezing, it's perfect. Okay. Yeah, well, you'll have to wait till next uh, next winter for or that I'll still, one. Or I'll still get it now. Yeah, that's another option. Yeah. 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 That's so another option. Let's look at the forecast. Maybe so butterbeer be- season. Butterbeer season at Universal Studios Orlando and Hollywood. Hollywood, if you happen to make your way over there. What about uh, Japan? They do butterbeer in Japan? Is it's that like- not listed. It's not listed in the press release. Maybe I don't think they not- have I don't think they have uh Harry Potter. Japan. Oh, okay. And they probably they? they probably care no, too they much don't. about their health to uh, be eating and, and drinking stuff like that. All right, they're a healthy. They're healthy people. Next Tuesday. No, there's a there's a, a Florida, Japan, Hollywood, and Beijing. Oh, okay. But do they have uh, the Wizarding World? Yeah, that's what I mean. Oh, those, okay. Yeah, the Wizarding World is at all of those parks. Oh, wow. Okay, I didn't all know right. that was Dickerman. Uh, mm-hmm. Tuesday, March nineteenth, high of sixty nine, low of forty nine. All right. Oh, let's perfect. Go. So that's a hot butter beer season right there. All right, let's get our uh, our uh, our person over at Universal, our uh, person that personally uh, you know brings us in, gives us the VIP tickets, gives us the whole uh, the whole shebang. We'll have mm-hmm. them uh, bring us out then. So I'll I use my pass. I'll use my pass. Your warm butter beer. I thought we had like a personal envoy there. Uh huh. I thought that was a thing. Uh huh. Should hey, have man. one for all the parks. I uh-huh. mean, we are the leading theme park podcast in Orlando. Yeah. Where's Derek? Uh huh. He said he was going to be here. Yep. Um. So that's uh, that's going on. So that's that's very much your centric news. Yeah, I do like that news. I do like, and I have the new Harry Potter video game. So I'm going to be back into the Potter world again real soon. When you're I playing start Hogwarts playing. Legacy, I'm going to. Uh, as, as soon as I stop playing Resident Evil Five, I will. I will go there. I've played it nine times. Well, we're getting a TV now. show in a few years too, so I. I heard that's that as Jimmy. Well. That's when you jump in when the Harry Potter TV show comes out. 
jump in each season a is vat is, of acid. Each season is going to be a book. I feel like you and Lauren Campbell Realtor dot com would really enjoy it. It's only eleven movies. I think you guys would like it. I know she's not super into sci-fi, but I feel it's like it's not she sci-fi. Would like, That's she the would thing. like it's the fantasy. whimsical. It's a whimsical world of Harry Potter. Yeah, it's she, basically. Do you guys watch Game she, of Thrones? It's basically Game no, of Thrones. She will not watch Thrones with me. Oh, it's, she didn't watch Thrones either. Nah. Wow. She's, it's basically. She's hardcore. It's basically. It's basically Star Trek. Nope, it, that's no, a great way to get her to not it's watch it. It's basically how I met your mother with wands. Yes, exactly. It is exactly how I met your mother. And uh yeah, and she said no the second you went wah. Mm-hmm. Didn't even get to D. Yeah, she's out. She's like It's you. basically <laughs> She's uh, left the chat. It's basically the Marvel Cinematic Universe. She thinks we're such nerds, doesn't she? Oh yeah. Yeah. Um hey, uh Harry Potter, uh not Harry Potter. Um Halloween Horror Nights is coming up. You know, I heard Wait, that uh, they're already they're already becoming speculation about this uh, this particular yep. event, the biggest Halloween event in the literal world. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and two houses uh, are very much in play. Okay, what are we? Actually, three uh, houses are very much in play. All right, Stranger Things. Nope. Mm-mm. Really? No. That that according to uh, Millie Bobby Brown, they have nine more months of filming to do on the final season. Of MBB that show. MBB would oh, know. Jeez. Yeah. The strike, the strike really affected that. She's like 22 now, right? They, the, the, all of them are. She was like a baby. Like, I, How long has that show been on? That show came out, I think, in like 2015. I have a hard time understanding that those kids are all adults now. Well, they are. I know. That means I'm very old. Season one came out in 2016. Wow. And we're probably looking at 2020, maybe 2024, if they, the end of, if they split the season like they did uh, season four. Mm-hmm. Nobody likes it when they do that either. Nobody likes it when you split a season. Well, let me ask you, would you rather get half a season sooner or have to wait like an extra year to get the full season? They just don't take so long. You know? Hey, how about this? <laughs> these guys, these guys that's are so not, these guys are so the... soft. Like network TV would do 24 episodes a season. They would do 24 Hour-long shows or thirty-minute shows every single 22 season. Twenty-two minutes. Yeah, these guys are like, oh, I can't make eight episodes. It's too hard. Yeah, that's that's. I I am right there with you. Like I I recently okay. a sitcom that has a static set that never changes. Twenty-four. Jack Bauer. He's not wrong there. One of the greatest shows ever. I mean, here's the thing. At least in season one. I wa- I recently uh, watched The Bear, the F- F- the FX show The Bear. Mm-hmm. Yep. And it was like, oh my god, the new season's gonna come out this year. It's like, well, when did season um when did season two come out? Last year. When did season one come out? Two years ago. Wait, you're releasing a show every year? What a concept! Yeah, I know. So you you're being so generous. No, here's the thing. You you, you want to know what I want Stranger Things to do? How about this? And I know this goes against everything Netflix believes in, but if you want to drive up subscriber numbers. One episode a week? Yes! Yeah. Control Disney, the dialogue. Disney Plus does it. D- exactly. I mean, I know some some streamers like to do, I know some some streamers like to do like three episodes at uh, at once and then they do weekly after mm-hmm. that. But like the the show Invincible on Amazon, uh based on the comic book, the animated show. Mm-hmm. They're doing such like Season two has been five episodes and then a few weeks off and then one episode and oh. then a few No, just like give me one a week. Just yeah. wait till it's finished. Yeah. Please. Please. So, uh, not Stranger Things. <laughs> nope. Nope. Um, uh, one of them we've already kind of speculated on because uh, uh, the movie made a bunch of money. Five Nights at Freddy's. Five Nights at Freddy's was like this surprise runaway hit that like nobody expected because it came out on streaming on Peacock, which is It was a day and cheap. date. Same thing. They're like, the movies can't make money because they're on streaming the same day. Well, that proved all that wrong. I mean, some ha- so it has worked sometimes. Like, Dune... One worked when when Max did that. Yeah, it didn't make as much money, but it did make money. Yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, so there's that one, and then there's two others. Okay. Uh, we've got. Uh, I think Five Nights at Freddy will be a good house too. Um, this year we've got a new Ghostbusters movie, which should be titled uh, Ghostbusters Ecto Cooler, but instead it's Ghost Bus- Ghostbusters Frozen Empire. Yes. So uh, you could do another Ghostbusters house and then get yelled at when uh, Jimmy tells you to touch something. <laughs> Pick up <laughs> the phone. We got one. She got mad. She was very mad at me. But I had done it like the time before we were there and it was no problem. Yeah, nobody said anything, but we had a different person or yeah, a different actress. He was not happy with us. And then an interesting house. Um, that I think will be a hit, but is very divisive on on the internets. Mm-hmm. A quiet place. 
That would be a very interesting house. Right? Like, how do you pull that it's, off? It's going to be dependent on who you go through with. Can you? Because, like, if you go through with people that'll play along and be silent the whole time, it'll be cool. But you know, you're going to have rowdy groups that go through there. Well, then, the, then go after them. That, mm-hmm. that, that's the thing. Like, you have to play into it. Like, if they're going to be rowdy, then the scare actors have to go after them. You need like a dozen extras from their la- rowdy, so they're just everywhere. I mean, the real thing about a house like that, it's a, a high concept house, mm-hmm. but it's really, you have to stagger groups really well. Oh, then. it's so hard there. Cause I know. The, the crowds are just so massive. That's the problem. Mm-hmm. So I don't know if you make that the biggest house that you have to where you can, you can get away with doing eight, ten people at a time. I don't know. What if you did a dual entrance house? So people come in from the right side, people come in from the left side, and at some point they will cross each other as they go through the house. Not in the same lane. They'd have separate lanes, but... So basically you just want to d- 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 make two houses but be for one theme. Yeah, I mean, I guess, yeah. Yeah, like you're, you're, you're travelers passing, you know. I'm trying to remember if they ever used the Dueling Dragons queue. For a house, because that could have worked, because that did kind of split off. Yeah, uh, I don't remember that being. Uh, a thing. I, don't, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. But we do know that uh, the uh, Fast and Furious house will be used as a queue again. I, it's, there's rumors about. <laughs> there's rumors that that might be going away. It might be going away. I mean, it's the most. I, I, I guarantee they know. They obviously they, know they, that nobody. I've told it. you this though. You have to go into that house now, being in on the joke. Yeah. The ride, yes. Yeah, like just go into it knowing that. Yeah, that's. Terrible. I mean, I talked about this on the on the podcast a few weeks ago. Th- that franchise should have taken over for T two three D battle across time. Yeah, yeah, but it lends a little bit better to that kind of an environment. Now, what do you think if they do replace that ride? What do we replace it with? I don't know. Maybe something that deals with a natural disaster. Okay. Like, um, an, like an earthquake? Yeah, maybe like an earthquake. That would be cool. Um, I'm just kind of spitballing here in San Francisco. Okay. Um, maybe like, you know, er, there's been a lot of earthquakes on the West Coast. Maybe like it be themed after like the big one. Okay. Right. Yeah. I'm thinking maybe title it like earthquake colon the big one. Like you're in, maybe you're in a subway car. So maybe I'm just speaking off the high that I'm on right now, but you know, Universal's into IPs. Mm-hmm. What if we did a Dune ride, like riding a sandworm? Okay, I'm just just hear me out. And then you retheme it at Halloween time and be sandworms from Beetlejuice. Uh, sure. Or you do, <laughs> uh, you do that old Kevin Bacon movie. I don't remember that one. Tremors. Was Tremors. Yeah, you could do Tremors uh, in the Actually, Halloween time. A Beetlejuice uh, attraction would be cool. Well, he said the oh, Beetlejuice show all oh, the time. Oh, yeah. maybe a Beetlejuice like uh, rock show, and it could like have a review. A, maybe a review that's a graveyard got graveyard review. Yeah, so it's got maybe I again just spitballing Dracula, Frankenstein's monster, the Wolfman. No, the Wolfman. Yes, <laughs> you guys. You He's guys. a Jewish. <laughs> Wolf, it's Mr. Man. Wolfman. He's here. <laughs> You guys are getting crazy. Like, I mean, what are you going to suggest next? Bill and Ted do a show at a Halloween event? No, Doesn't no, even no. make any but sense. I was saying more like the Deets house. Mm-hmm. Well, here's the thing that I, you could like go through. Well, they're it, making a new Beetlejuice. It would so not that's... surprise me if there's a if there's a Beetlejuice house. When's that Beetlejuice, movie? Beetlejuice comes out. I want to say in August. Well, that's perfect timing. Yeah, and Michael Keaton says that he's already seen a cut of the, of the film, and he says it's amazing. Well, he says it's it's practical effects. It's not like most of the recent Tim Burton movies that are heavily CGI'd. Mm-hmm. September 6th is when that comes out. The problem is, is that it's March 14th when recording this. Halloween Horror Nights begins... In September. March 1st. <laughs> so I don't know how they're going to pull that off. Yeah, It's already started, but there's no house. Guys, Nobody knows. I, I, this happening. is my next news story. Mickey's not so very uh, scary. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. Halloween Christmas? party. Yeah. It's sold out right now. <laughs> <laughs> it just started last month. <laughs> we started Mickey's Halloween in in February of 2024. Yes. Um. One. It, it's not. It, they start like in. They don't even wait till the end of August, do they? Horror nights begins. I think the last weekend of 
um, August. I think Mickey starts the beginning of it August. Does. Yes, <laughs> it's like the next thing you know, it's going to be July. We are a month away. So we are a month away from not so scary mm. uh, tickets going on sale. Yeah, I, I would not be surprised. And then we are two months away for the Christmas party tickets going on sale. There you go. The, Actually, the Christmas carrot. They're just going to do not so scary Christmas. I, that's and what is what I accidentally year round. Yeah, uh, right. which means we are three months away from Jimmy having to book his candlelight processional <laughs> performance. <laughs> candlelight processional used to come out in July. But since we've come back from COVID, they don't do the same thing that they used to do. It's all wonky now. I, I don't like the changes since COVID. Like, they haven't gone back to, like, normal things for a lot of these parks. And I want them back. Well, maybe one of the people that is uh, rumored to be uh, taking over for Bob Iger. No, is he out again? Well, no. he's He has said that when his three years is up, like, he's done. Yeah. He has um, not righted the ship yet. He's working on it. I thought he was coming back to right the ship. He's, he's working like, on it. We're still taking on water. So there's four internal candidates. Okay. Josh Damaro, who's in charge of Disney experiences, so mm, the parks. Okay. Alan Bergman, who's uh, the co-chairman of Disney Entertainment, okay. so the movie studio. Okay. Dana Walden, who is the co-chairman of Disney Entertainment. Mm -hmm. And Jimmy Pitaro, who's the chairman of ESPN. That's a weird choice. Like, any executive they throw in there is going to suck anyhow, because let's face it, executives all suck. Bob Iger was great at the job the first time around. He was. He, he bought He bought Marvel, he bought Disney, or he bought Star Wars. Like, he knows. He knew what he was doing. I mean, did he? Yes, he did. I mean, he did. He bought He bought Lucasfilm for $4 hey, million. That's are, made are, $12 okay, billion. Look, 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 look. Are they better off now well, than they were before? Well, that's because Chappix... Flew it into the sun. Well, traffic okay? and COVID happened. That like yeah. that immediately. That was a perfect storm. Yeah. So you're saying the Star Wars trilogy was better than the last trilogy? That they spent four billion on the rights. It's made twelve. Well, yeah, it's worked out. I'm not saying that it's not. They haven't worked out financially. I'm saying has it worked out for the fans of the genre? Why? Because it, uh, Star Wars has now become Star Trek, where it's just a television franchise. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Well, speaking of which, uh, Andor. Oh no, did you guys? T did we talk about this last time? Andor. Ahsoka and uh, yeah, you, you yes, you brought it up on the podcast last week. Yes, but that is exciting. <laughs> it's worth mentioning again. That's going to be in Star Tours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's exciting. I'm I'm excited about that. But I look forward to Stellan Skarsgård yelling at me for 20 minutes on Star Tours. <laughs> <laughs> Bring it. I'm fine with it. I'm <laughs> really, I am really curious how they're going to like take the serious nature exactly, of yeah. Andor and plug that into Star Tours. That's that's an interesting mix. We're going to find out. Yeah, yeah we're, we're going to see how that uh, how that all works out for us. Well, well, we're almost out of time here on the podcast for this week. So, Scott, if people want to get the latest breaking theme park news, like uh, butter, movie like, news. Like Butterbeer Day. <laughs> and uh, and uh, Butterbeer News, where can they go? You can follow us on Twitter at Theme Park Show, Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok at the Theme Park Podcast. You can watch at the Theme Park YouTube.com. And the show comes to you live from the Lauren Campbell Realtor.com, T-Bow Gazebo Studios. For Jimmy D, for Scott Harris, I am Dickerman. Until next week, we'll see you out at the parks. Park Podcast. Follow the show on Facebook and Instagram at the Theme Park Podcast. To catch up on previous episodes, check out the ThemeParkPodcast.com, the iHeartRadio app, or Apple Podcasts. And restarted. No, don't start.